Welcome back, Achievers to Door, Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of September 3rd, already September 3rd. I am one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting digitally with me today is, of course, Alex. How are you? Hello. I'm good. How about you? It's good. It's very rainy here, very humid, Mm -hmm. but that's just Mm -hmm. Georgia. Yeah, this yeah. is how it is. Mm-hmm. Just random rain stops and it's humid. And mm. I mean, it's whatever, but it's a it's a nice night. And nothing to complain about. Um, okay, Alex. Mm. It's been a pretty eventful week. I'm not gonna mm-hmm. lie to you. There's a lot mm-hmm. to talk about. I want to jump into it. Normally, I of course ask you that one question I ask you every single week. I'm gonna hold that middle of the show. Okay. But before we get into the actual show, remember a couple of different ways to support us. You can do it freely, like you're doing it right now, on any sort of YouTube or podcast service of your choice. Like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. If you're on YouTube, if you're on a podcast service, of course, you can give us a five-star review. That helps us out so much. And then, if you want to go the extra mile, you can go over to Patreon.com for pennies a day. You can support us in the endeavor that we have going on for the past two semi-odd years. But... Whatever way you support, we appreciate you. Let's get into the show. First, you read the thumbnail. Yes, you You saw the title. Death Stranding 2, it's coming. It's coming. And this comes via the star himself, Norman Reedus. (laughs) Now, this was given in an interview very offhandedly, and clearly he's not supposed to say any of this or talk about it, but... He very casually round this up. So he's he's Sam Porter Bridges. He has he can. He can. He first off, what are they gonna do? Fire him? So it's like, well, I mean, he really can do whatever he wants. I don't think he, because I mean, he's used to TVs and movies. I mm. doubt he really was like, he probably was like, oh, it doesn't matter if I tell them like it's. He's like, does anybody productive. really care? Like, Everybody's well, like, yes. Well, in movies <laughs> and TV, I mm. mean, you, you could talk about it. I mean, at any point, as long as it's been announced, which usually they're announced like years in advance. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe this wasn't weird to him, but he was being interviewed by. Adoro Cinema, which seems to be a Spanish. Um, oh, he that's like that he that's when he fucked up. He's it, like, what are you what are y'all saying? It, it seemed like a movie, uh, uh, like site, um, for the Spanish speaking. I, of course, read mm-hmm. very little Spanish. I was trying to decipher what it was, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, it he literally was asked about Death Stranding and he said, quote, I think we're doing a second Death Stranding. The game is in no- negotiations now, so yay, end quote. That's literally what he said. So it's happening. I mean, it's in early negotiations. Mm-hmm. And if you're talking about Death Stranding, you're, they're going to do another one. I, I, yeah, I, for sure. So I honestly, we talked about this weeks ago, mm, actually mm-hmm. months ago now, that I thought the failed pitch from Kojima that he talked about um, was him pitching Death Stranding to the PlayStation. Uh, because gotcha. we know that there was a pitch and it didn't go through. So I just assumed it was Death Stranding and maybe it was. And he just came back later and was like, look, I'm I'm messing with Microsoft now. So maybe you want to do Death Stranding too? And they're like, mm. fine. Fine. Because <laughs> remember, Achievers, you've been listening to the show a couple weeks ago. We, we do know that Microsoft is in some way working with Kojima. It's one of those... Uh, Alex, I don't know if you remember the specific agreement, but it's one of the agreements where like they have agreed to begin working together. And if it's like it's like when you you're not dating the boyfriend girlfriend, mm-hmm. you're trying it out. It's like that, where it's like mm. you, you don't you haven't put you, a name on it. You haven't put a name on it. You're just kind of hanging out. You've acknowledged the partnership. There you go. That's even better. You're amazing, Alex. <laughs> uh, no word from Kojima or Sony on any of this. Uh, of course they are not going to comment on it. So mm-hmm. it, I think it's clear that it's true. Oh, yeah. Whether it comes out is a different story. But I think I think if if Kojima says, I want to make Death Stranding 2, I, I think even though Death Stranding sold um, relatively poorly, comparatively, of course, to the other first parties, mm. uh, I, th- I still think they say yes. I would, just to keep Kojima there. <laughs> Uh, according to the developer, Death Stranding has sold more. By March 2021, uh, Death Stranding has sold more than 5 million copies worldwide on PS4 and PC only. 
Um, yes. I'm assuming that's it, not including. I'm assuming Google because of pre-orders for PS5, you know. But as of March, yeah, five million copies. It's not actually too bad. Now, that's of course not all at full price. Um, I'm very curious on how much of that is from the PC sales, mm-hmm. um, because you can kind of figure out like, all right, well, they made this much money in the first few weeks because it sold at sixty bucks. Um, mm-hmm. Do you know if the PC re-releases released at sixty dollars? Uh, let me check. I would assume um, no, right? But ma- I mean, I don't know. It's Sony. They probably would be like, you know, they're good games. So I, I guess I wouldn't blame them. But I feel like I mean, it, apparently it did very well. So let's see. Uh, try PC because I found another thing. I was trying to see if it would tell me. It's fine if you mm-hmm. can't find it. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, it's not telling me. I'm pretty sure they didn't. Achievers, this is a great correction. You can either comment below, tweet at us, or if you're on Patreon, you can DM us, and I'll put it in the next week's show, unless Alex finds it throughout the show. But that's all I have, Alex. Do you have anything? You, you're you more of a Death Stranding fan than I was. Do you have anything to comment on this? I'm just, I, I'm surprised. I Because I have, for Achievers who have finished the game, is that really done? Like, what's what's gonna happen next? Yeah, I assume. Something like, how do with, you? I assume continue something that. with the new character that you see. Where you yeah, go and I'm from wondering, there, but I don't know. So I'm wondering, and I'm wondering if you know if you watched O N L um, last. I think I believe it was last week. Yep. Uh, they showed the director's cut they for did. Death Training, and it was a uh, just new missions and things like that. There was a a whole new cutscene that they like the cutscenes that they show. I wonder. Is that supposed to be kind of like, you know, it's like, oh, we're hinting at another maybe, one. Maybe they're adding even more lore and like, hey, mm-hmm. this thing happened. I'm curious. I don't know. Again, I always joke, but like, again, they've somehow made that game even. I mean, yeah. I feel like that's impossible, but they're doing it even longer. Mm-hmm. I do like the catapult. That does seem funny. And then the little robot man that comes help you. That seems funny. I like the little hover thing that you can just jump off a cliff and you'd be fine. Yeah. Yep, I like that too. I forgot about that. Um, so mm-hmm. this is a strange one. Um, Fortnite had a Martin Luther King event over the week. Um, and this, and this, yeah, and this, some people, this, this was like a, a little blimp on the uh, Twitter sphere. I feel like, and I wanted to bring it up here. So Fortnite, uh, Fortnite was in the Discord this week for something I bet no one saw coming. They hosted an in-game Martin Luther King Jr. event. It was a special mode that featured a recreated version of 1963 Washington, D.C., where the course, iconic and famous uh, I Have a Dream speech was held. Um, in this event, you can see the there's a giant screen playing this uh, speech on loop, and there's kind of like a mu- museum-like environment where it showcases some things that you would maybe see um, in 1963, like uh, separated uh, bathrooms and things and things like that and there's also different challenges you could do to unlock specific event emotes and things like that uh i wanted to bring this up alex because mm. a part of me liked that they did this and another part of me went why why so let's let's lead with the the thing i like so i liked that like this is some sort of educational thing. I imagine a lot of kids are using this, so maybe yeah, some like kid they out there knowledge. Is, you know that yeah. the that 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 did happen, and it's awesome. I love Martin Luther King. Like I love Martin. Luther. He's one mm-hmm. of my heroes. So this was actually really cool to me. Mm-hmm. Addendum on that. It maybe Fortnite's not the place to do that, but we, Alex, if you remember this, we grew up in the War on Drugs and the Dare era right mm-hmm. so our favorite cartoon characters was always telling us not to do drugs so i was like maybe that's mm-hmm. this generation's like special commercial type thing and then what I've... what they really effed up alex mm. is they didn't turn off skins so the picture you could clearly see like rick from rick and morty is walking around a museum with that's about MLK. Like it does. It's, the tone is way off. Like like you yeah. can, like when you see <laughs> when you when you see very serious museum like things and Superman and like and there and Rick from Rick and Morty and Morty and yeah like buff cats and stuff are walking around. It's I think it loses a lot of what it's supposed to mean. 
And yeah, I it's... cannot believe someone at Epic didn't go. Maybe we turn off the skins. Like, like maybe we don't. Yeah, it's so, weird. But it's just weird how because it doing that with the skins. Like, I it's, it's I don't want to say it, but I'm gonna say it. It kind of makes it seem like they're kind of like making it a joke. Yeah, for sure. I agree with that. Yeah, I like, 100% like agree. Not taking Literally, that. there's a Twitter picture. I, I want to yeah. first off, I want to bring up two people I, I want to shout out that mm. have uh, a deeper connection than me or Alex have to this. One, mm. Emmett Watkins Jr. He's been on this show before. His Twitter, you can go over his Twitter and look at what he thought of the event. Um, I implore everyone to go do that because you, you actually get a black perspective. Yeah. Two, Blessing Adio Jr another person i want to give a shout out to go over his twitter as well to get a again black perspective of this whereas i have more of a admiration for martin luther king they have more of a of course black mm -hmm. perspective on it they can give that will give a more full picture to this than what i yep. can give but that being said both of them brought up the fact that there's a bunch of like cartoon characters like and I don't know if emotes were disabled, but if they weren't, that's even worse because then you can like dance around and stuff. So I, I, again, I don't know if they definitely true, but, weren't disabled. But, but again, maybe think this through a little, a little more because this is a little weird. Yeah, a little weird. Again, I like the sentiment, yeah. but if you're gonna do it, you have to do it a hundred percent right, or it's, or you shouldn't have done it at all. Yeah, because if not, I mean, it, it, you gotta be careful with type of type of stuff because it could lead to uh, people feeling disrespected. Of course, yeah. It, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm very curious on if they'll try this again. Because this reminds me of what... Um, it's a little different, of course, but it reminds me of Assassin's Creed when they did the... You remember the mode, the museum mode, where like, it's, oh, there's like a the, narrator. About, yeah, you're talking about the, uh, the actual history adventure mode thing? Yes, that thing. Yeah, yeah. That kind of reminded me. So I was like, maybe they're really trying to teach people. I was like, I, mm -hmm. I, this isn't the way, bro. You, this is a miss. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's let's move on. Let's move. Um, so big splashes in the Twitch streaming world. Um, this past week we have two big ones. I want to hit with um the first one. So in a shocking move this week, we saw a couple high level streamers leave the monster streaming platform known as Twitch, which is of course owned by Amazon. Uh, and they left. Amazon to go to YouTube Gaming. We're going to start with Mr. Ben Lupo, a.k.a. Dr. Lupo. Um, there's a full interview on the Washington Post if you want to get all of his comments on why he left, the reasons. Um, he gets more in depth with uh, some personal aspects of this and things like that. If you want the full story, you go over there. But I'm just going to give a couple quotes that I liked uh, from that specific article. <clears throat> so I'm um, pull a couple things. So... One reason I feel like is most important that to, for the reason why he says, quote, family time is crazy important as is reducing the amount of pressure because mental health is crazy important. Um, and then he went on to discuss like he's streamed 60 to 70 hours a week sometimes. And then he said, um, uh, everybody, everybody's just trying to secure the bag, right? There's no shame in that. That's literally why everyone gets up and goes to work, right? So, of course, the financial situation that YouTube presented me, without a doubt, is like, you know, I'm secure for life. Everyone's trying to get to the point. Why would I say no to that, end quote? So, very clearly, he's telling us without telling us, he's set. He's good. Mm -hmm. He's rich. He's, he doesn't have to worry about probably working ever again. Or, to very minimum, he has to work out this contract. And then he really doesn't have to wor worry about working ever again. So, that mm -hmm. just gives you a little bit of what the situation was like. Um, and then he goes, uh, I wanted to bring up this too, some of the issues he had with Twitch, which is very po um, eh, popular, isn't the right word, uh, is very contentious right now, that, uh, because there was actually a boycott on Twitch very recently. A bunch of Twitch streamers just straight up were like, we're not streaming this day to protest these hate raids, is what they're called. So eventually, eventually uh, basically, a bunch of people get together, jump into someone's stream, usually it is a black streamer, and they just tear them apart. It's fucked up. Mm. I've watched it happen. It's actually someone I follow on Twitter now that I saw go through, and it's pretty fucked up. And Twitch kind of said like we're working on it, but apparently this has been a problem for a while, and they've never done anything. So that was another reason he cites. Uh, quote: I think putting more of a spotlight on other platforms is important to try and push for all platforms to grow and adapt, and be this safe place for people to be able to enjoy gaming. 
Gaming for me has always been about being inclusive and fun. I think it's important to keep that diverse, inclusive nature of gaming across streaming platforms as well. It's a huge thing to make people feel like they're a part of something, end quote. Of course, he's referencing the giant monopoly that is Twitch, right? I feel like if you're going to stream somewhere, you almost have to do it on Twitch, but mm-hmm. that might change now with uh, YouTube Gaming. Alex, um, do you consume Dr. Lupo's content at all? Do you even know who this man is? I um, I don't know much. I've only ever heard his name mm-hmm. uh, as of uh, with uh, Fortnite. <laughs> so you, yeah, same here. I, I of course know the big four: Courage, Lupo, Ninja, Tim Tatman, and of course I mm-hmm. I know them from all the Fortnite days when that was like super hot mm-hmm. and wild. But uh, specifically, why I know him is one: he's a big Destiny guy. And big Destiny guy and like small, like he plays a lot of Destiny, but he's not like a Destiny streamer, I would say. Mm-hmm. He has played the game and he does giant charity streams for uh, St. Jude. He's like, does like literally millions of dollars every uh, year. It's, it's nuts. Mm-hmm. But uh, this is nuts. This is a big name mm-hmm. leaving Twitch, directly going to YouTube streaming. And this isn't the normal situation where like, there's a hiatus and then they go like he's already did his first stream in the first like couple days of announcing it. Mm-hmm. This is I feel like a big deal and I feel like we're we're really seeing YouTube starting to try and get in more into streaming. They're they're really focusing on like, hey, we don't have those big names. We don't have the ninjas. We don't have the Goliathins. Whoever you want to put the name in there, we have to start securing people. And th- clearly, they're throwing money around because this man's mm-hmm. now set for life. So they pr- they probably jumped. A bag full of money and i was like come stream here exclusively and like, okay uh so what do you think about this you you don't really consume streaming so i know this probably doesn't affect not you that much, much but i mean i sometimes I- watch them when they post on on youtube like i watch a lot of tim the yeah. tap man for instance like i watch all his call of duty stuff here once mm-hmm. in a while um but no it is interesting that they uh they change like to the to change streaming yeah. services mm-hmm. so it's just um I'm, I mean, we haven't seen this big of a moon really since Mixer went off. Yeah, like and since then Mixer yeah. was shut down. Really, we haven't seen yeah. like this big of a streaming debacle really since then. Mm. Well, because yeah, because it wasn't Ninja through Mixer, and now he's completely on on Twitch now. Yes, yeah. There was three big people: Shroud, Ninja, mm. and Goliath. And those those were like the big three on Mixer. And then mm. when that went off, they were just free contracts that got free money, basically. Um, so. Yeah, they they would they left there. I think all of them are on Twitch now. I yeah. could be wrong. I know Shroud and Ninja are. I don't know about Goliath and just uh, again another correction for like have it. But uh, yeah, the, I my favorite part was when he brought up the Monopoly. That was a really interesting way. Of, I wonder if he really thought about it that way, where he specifically goes like, when only one platform is dominant, you want you don't see much change. So if you know yeah. another platform gets bigger you start seeing more of a combative nature towards each other uh, that will uh, look more change. Competition is always good, so I love seeing that. Mm. And then, of course, we have the second huge streamer, uh, Tim uh, Tim Bitar, I think is how you pronounce his last name. Um, of course, this is Tim the Tap Man. Alex brought him up earlier. He has also left. There wasn't a huge lengthy interview. I did see he gave an interview to Insiders. You have to pay for that. And I wasn't about to pay for that. So I don't have... <laughs> As many quotes from him, but he did basically bring up essentially the same thing Dr. Lupo did. He, when he first started, he had no family. It was just him streaming, like, God numbers of hours. Now he's married with a child, and he's like, I have to think about them now. So this is a way mm-hmm. to make sure they're taken care of and I can spend more time with them. So basically the same situation for both. More family time. Uh, and uh, I actually love that Dr. Lupo specifically said, like, I want to travel with my son. But like I want to yep. leave and, and stop working all the time, and I was like, mm-hmm. "I get it, bro. I get it." <laughs> uh, but th- that's that's basically it. Alex, do you have any lasting thoughts for any of that? I mean, good for them uh, that they're able to do what they want to do, and you know, give that time to their families. Because mm-hmm. not a lot of people can get to do that. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I was gonna, Alex. Hmm. I was gonna cover a Kotaku article by one Ethan Gatch. Okay. Uh, he goes to say, if you're going to preview Far Cry 6, at least do it right. This is a this is Uh-oh. an article he did. This would really, go. honestly, if I'm being honest with the achievers and with you, Alex, 
This would mm-hmm. devolve into me just making fun of this man for the next like 10 to 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be mean, so I'm just going to skip it. Okay. I wanted to give the achievers, because this is a big thing this week. This has been a big, like everyone's dunking on them. So mm-hmm. I, I was going to dunk on them too, but I'm like, I, you we'll know, let the man slide. I'll, I'll let him slide this time. Uh, we'll roast him <laughs> on our own. We'll, uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> I, you roast it enough. I, ro- I didn't roast yeah. him much on Twitter. I was going to, but I was like, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I, I, I'll be mean, but you know, I don't want to be that mean. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things where, like, I'll be mean if it's very funny, but it, he he already made a bad article. I'm not gonna shit on him any more than he already has been. But very interesting that seemingly everyone's now against Kotaku, which is very interesting to see. Um, mm. Kotaku is going like I'm be I'll be very interested to see where Kotaku is in five years. They're mm. still around. I mean, it's like um, it's like G four. Oh, damn. G4, have no, you I'm watched joking. anything from that? Where? Do, we Do still I watch know? it online? Or? Is it, again, I, I'm still confused. Is it out? Can you watch a G4? Oh, hold on. I'm going to YouTube. Achievers, this is live. I'm, okay, I'm so not cutting any okay. of this out. I, I want. We're all going to figure out live. To, okay, G4 TV. Okay, they are uploading things. Are they really? Yes, they are. So if there's G4 TV. It is a YouTube page. Uh, and it looks like X Play is, is this X Play? I guess yeah, the, yeah. There's X Play shows. Okay. They're yeah. talking about some. He's reviewing right. games. Oof. Okay. All right. We're gonna move on. We're gonna move on. Hmm. I do. I do miss X Play. Kind of makes me want to watch it, but I got too much stuff. The new PS5 has a much smaller heatsink. This is via Austin Evans. I watched one of his videos that he posted, and it gave you an interesting look. So he received a new PlayStation 5 model early from Japan. This is, of mm. course, the popular tech YouTuber Austin Evans, one of the biggest ones out there. Mm-hmm. Um, Show, uh, showed me how to make a, t- uh, make a PC. I've watched that video probably seven times because it's just so it's so nice to watch. I've watched so every single year's. <laughs> yes, you have to. Um, upon, you have to. Uh, yeah, upon his dismantling of this PS5 with one of his buddies, uh, he notices a couple changes. One, and one of the most jarring changes, is the heatsink. It is much smaller uh, than the original model's PS5s. Oh, if gosh. you want to see this, you can uh, either go um, and just look up PS5 heatsink Austin Evans. You can watch his video. There's millions of articles about this. Um, Alex, if you want to see what it looks like, you can click the hyperlink. You should be able to see it. <laughs> oh, okay. um, that's not even the biggest issue either. Not, eh, I wouldn't say issue. Um, that's not the biggest thing um, or the only change. There is the different design of the fan as well inside of it, so it's slightly different. Um, if you watch his uh, video, he goes on to talk about um, uh, what the heatsink might mean, um, what the fan might mean. So putting him side to side, running the exact same game, the newer model actually does run three degrees higher in Celsius than the other model does. And Austin Evans did say it is slightly louder, although it does not seem to be incredibly louder. It seems very minute in its actual, um, oh, excuse me, the actual uh, decibel difference. Like, it's not Man, much of a difference at all, apparently. Look at the difference. No, it's it's a huge difference. Now, I'm, now this has been another huge contentious thing on Twitter. I am not the heat sink guru guy that's going to tell you what that heat sink is or anything. But so many people came out of the woodworks. First off, a lot of people making fun of the PS5. And then there were people defending the PS5 because they were saying that this is be- a better heatsink, maybe. And then the fan is different. So maybe the, yeah, fan, the fan is, is making... Yeah, the fan's different. Yeah, the fan is making the, the difference. Um, so I'm, I'm just reporting this as I watch the video. So you all make what thoughts of as you will. I... I don't really have thoughts. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a difference. If it's, and Alex, you know tech a mm. bit better than I do. Three degrees Celsius, that's not a big difference for tech, right? Like, that, like I'm, I'm, it's not like the thing's Eek. melting. 
it's no, but it it depends on time because like the you know if you're going three uh, three degrees Celsius for a long period of time that adds up. Okay, so, so imagine you know yeah, three degrees okay. Celsius for an hour could it's probably not gonna hurt anything, but three degrees Celsius extra for like for three hours for a per, a prolonged yeah, time. Yeah. Mm. Well, make sure it's well vented if you do get this new model. Um, make sure you have plenty of airways open. You don't want to get that thing overheating. I will say mm -hmm. again, it is much smaller. I, I'm not again not the part guy. Not I'm not the one that's like, well, that's the G7. If it helps, if it helps you, Elijah. Okay. Three three degrees Celsius is thirty seven degrees Fahrenheit. So that's thirty seven degrees difference in Fahrenheit. I knew it was so a big. I knew it was a big so difference. Say, I didn't know it was that big of a difference. So let's say fifty-two degrees Celsius is one hundred and twenty-five Fahrenheit. If you do fifty-five, that's one hundred and thirty-one, which is yeah. weird because like, but now I just said it was different. That's still a lot, though. That's it is a big difference. I knew Celsius was uh, much different when you're going from Fahrenheit. Forgot yeah. it was that big of a difference. So, hmm, I don't know. I'm gonna need more. Before I start yeah. breaking Sony's balls over this, it's, uh, I mean, it's, ten, look, it's ten degrees look, higher. Look clearly, That's still much. Sony is going to cut corners when they can make money. That's just yeah. that's a business. I mean, whether ten that's, degrees, five whether, degrees is a lot to me. No, I I agree with you. First off, there should be no difference because it's no the car, same. No. You're paying the same amount of money, so there shouldn't be any difference. Um, um, yeah, maybe they cut the cost to make, start making money on the systems. I mean, I would have. It would have been better if it was one degree less, but no. Yeah, I I don't know. Everyone was like, "Well, I'll wait for the slim model or whatever." I'm like, I again, just reporting mm -hmm. it to you, achievers. I am not making any. I already have my PS5, so I'm not. And this worried. fan, it's interesting. The fan is interesting. It has a brand new design. I they I hiked it to like some sort of helix type thing. Um, well, the curves, if you like, it, yeah, the curving yeah. on the on the original model, there was a space. So each helix little area, there wasn't added, there wasn't as much spacing. Mm -hmm. Now it's all the way down, but they look th the the area looks thinner. So it's I mean it's, it comes really out quick, to the same really shape. quick for the audio listen. I know we we didn't help you out a lot. Really quickly, just so you know, picture half of the PS five. <laughs> The heat seek is about half the size of this thing, and the new model is a th maybe a third. That's being nice. It's probably a, a, like a fourth. It actually is probably a third, but it's way smaller. Just, now, yeah, no, maybe God. this is some new tech where it's way better and you don't need them. I, I doubt that. The fan yeah, looks cool though. It's so different, so weird. Yeah, it is very strange. Huh. Interesting. Food for thought for the achievers. Mm -hmm. for that. Speaking of PlayStation, mm. there's a showcase they announced yes, that today. It's going to be broadcast next Thursday. Next Thursday, Jesus. This is going to be their summer showcase. It's going to be 1 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can watch this on a number of places. Um, if we can, of course, expect a reacts either immediately after or during. It depends on our scheduling. Mm -hmm. But we're very excited about the showcase. But there... One prediction. One prediction. What would what are you saying Ooh. right now? For your your one prediction. Your best prediction. What you got? One prediction. Pull them all. One prediction right now. Mm. <laughs> Horizon delayed again. No, I'm just joking. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. They they have to showcase to say it got delayed again. Mm. Uh, I want to swing for the fences and say we finally figure out. Um, mm, they might announce the Uncharted remake mm. that we know they're working on for the first one. Mm -hmm. When does the movie come out? Do you know off the top of your head? Unch not off the top of my head, no, but I can okay. figure that out in about two seconds. Thank you. I, 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 I want to say they wouldn't talk about that until the February. This, Feb this February? February uh, 2022. It says February 18 is what it's scheduled for. Whoa. Ooh, we actually might see that then. They want that remake around the time the movie comes out for sure. So we actually might see a little bit of that Uncharted 1 remake or maybe just announcing it. 
Who knows? I, I'm gonna stick with that one actually. I didn't know it was that soon, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say we're gonna see the Uncharted one remaster, remake, a little bit of a cheat because I we know they're working on that, but nonetheless, I think it's a good one. And then after that, of course, um, and we also know that they're doing the Last of Us Part One remake for PS5. Um, mm -hmm. and that'll come out around the HBO show. What do you think? What's your What's your one? It's It's crazy because I keep wanting to say, or I, like you just said, you know, oh, we'll probably see the the Uncharted trilogy thing. I'm thinking. I don't think we'll see we'll the trilogy. I, it's just the first one. We'll see. The, sorry, the first one. That's what I meant. The, whatever you just said. I think we're actually gonna see either a trailer, like a trailer for either that movie, even though it's a game showcase. I mean, it's PlayStation mm -hmm. now, isn't it? You go ahead. Do you go, think go ahead. it's either, I'm, I'm either gonna a read their trailer or a Last of Us trailer or Ooh. teaser for the show? Mm. They said they're they're it's like millions of dollars in the Last of Us show. Well, so they te well the show they teased the, the the logo too. It's like red and it's red and black and it, uh, the red it's red letters. Yeah. And in the background, there's a Firefly logo in white. Tune in next Thursday, September 9th at 1 p.m. Pacific time. For a look into the future of PS5, the showcase will weigh in at around 40 minutes and include updates from PlayStation Studios and some of the industry's most imaginative developers for games releasing this holiday and beyond. And stick around after the presentation to get more updates from some of the studio's teams featured in the showcase. Um, one thing to note, the PlayStation's next generation VR won't make an appearance this time. Mm. They do say the word playstation studios so i would assume nothing on movies or tv shows that's what i'm thinking when you said playstation studios i was like well maybe i guess it's just just games we might um, see the rumored socom game that mm, might be too I don't, early i don't think so i don't think we're, mm -mm. i don't think so nope. sorry mm -mm. i, I, I think that. i don't think that's gonna happen i think we're gonna see more call of duty gameplay like we know Gorilla is working on a SOCOM game. Just so everyone mm -hmm. knows, it's just the fact that when they're going to release it. No, sorry, th we know they're working on a shooter multiplayer game. I think they they're going to. I think they're going to reveal the multiplayer for uh, Call of Duty Vanguard because PlayStation's always been tight with Call of yeah. uh, Call of Duty's always been tight with PlayStation, and they always get shit first. It says and, and some of the industry's most imaginative developers. I can definitely see a Call of Duty Vanguard thing. And we saw some of the story. We haven't seen multiplayer, so yeah. I think they're going to be like, oh, here's the multiplayer, here's the multiplayer, and this multiplayer. is what you're looking for. Yep. I, I and see oh, wait, is this? Yeah. Okay. Is that, so that, is that your prediction? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yep. You're, you're guaranteed to be right. I, I don't know. <laughs> watching me be completely wrong and watch you show, show them the movie <laughs> here's the movie like a third of it you're like what we're watching mm -hmm. the movie now i guess um and sony or remained. Elden Ring. so sony remained in the news though alex don't worry about that we can still mm -hmm. talk about them for a few reasons of course they announced that showcase we just talked about but they also released an faq about horizon forbidden west to answer some possible questions the most jarring one is of course that there will no will be no free upgrade from PS4 to PS5 without purchasing an upgraded version. This is an excerpt from that in uh, from the question AFQ. Can I wow. upgrade my Horizon Forbidden West PS4 version to PS5 version? That is the uh, frequently asked question. Here's the answer: To access both the PS4 and PS5 versions of Horizon Forbidden West, you need to purchase the digital deluxe collectors or regalia editions dual entitlement does not apply to the standard and special editions this isn't of course the first time sony has pissed off a bunch of people all at once um with their confusing upgrade methods and workarounds that they do ghost of shima is the recent in this kind of upgrade shenanigans that they do of course they charged everyone 10 bucks right a quote-unquote upgrade to ps5 and Ooh, let's not forget it. that upgrade consisted of dual sense support that was a damn near about it because they already got the ps4 upgrade so it didn't get any additional stuff anyways mm -hmm. i i think we come across as um xbox, i'm not surprised xbox fanboy sometimes alex uh, mm -hmm. even though we shit on xbox all of the time it doesn't matter mm -hmm. but this is like unexcusable. 
You are like, buying was- you at Sony. You can afford to give everyone who buys Horizon Forbidden West. No, they f- can't because you know why they're wasting money on the system. No, see, th- this is nonsense. Why, if you bu- why do you have to buy a different version of the game to to upgrade? to the ps5 like why why does that even matter first off they're gonna walk back on this because they're being torn apart the last they, like two they, days. they didn't even tell you they'd be like oh if you buy the standard or special edition you can upgrade for a certain price nothing they didn't even say that they just said you, nothing uh, so oh, you achievers. just have to buy it again just in case you didn't notice um guess what news came out just after this was talked about Guess Uh-oh. oh the showcase news. The reason that is is because they they get to end the day with positive news. Oh, the showcase you wanted has been announced. Forget mm-hmm. about the horizon. Yeah. For, for, forget about the horizon stuff. Forget about the horizon stuff. Forget about the horizon. like that's that's why they did that. So don't let them work you like that. All right. Mm-hmm. If you're pissed off about it, stay pissed off about it. They're gonna change it if you keep it keep it to them. But again, Sony, come on, really. The, we all I, I, look. I made fun of smart delivery. If you remember, Alex, um, before mm-hmm. the Series X came out, it's way easy. So much easier. It is so much easier on Xbox mm-hmm. than it is on PlayStation. I never. If that little sticker, Alex, is on a game, I'm good. I know I'm I good. I know I'm good. Literally, I haven't turned my Watch Dogs Legion on since like the first month of the game. Then they announced that the, there was an upgrade for it. Literally, when the, they showed off their new Assassin's Creed character come up last week, I was like, oh, okay. Let me re-download the game. It's downloading. Okay, this is the Series X version. Boom, done. It upgraded to the most the version that I need. Done. Why is it so hard? So- like, You have like, smart makes, yeah. engineers. You have millions of dollars. Figure it out. Like, what is going on with the special editions, with the regular edition? Why do I need a pamphlet on editions to know what I get with what? Stop it. <laughs> just get just fucking two, two editions. There, there. Collector's special edition. One, two, there's four editions. There's, no, Alex. There's technically five because there's oh, just the uh, regular fucking game, too. Like what? Like, like what? Why is there so many? I, I don't understand. Achievers, am I overreacting on this? Comment below, and then I'll tell you why you're wrong. Patreon DM us, and then I'll tell you why you're wrong. Because this is again, this is nonsense. We should not. If you buy a PS4 version, you should just get the fucking upgrade. They already got the money from the system, so why is why do they want more money? At? They lost the money from the system. Remember, no, they they're, they they're making dumbass... more money. No, it's no now, now, now they're putting the dumbass heat sinks in it, and they're causing systems to destroy themselves. <laughs> with these fucking <laughs> SSDs that they said they bring them SSDs that they say they don't know they work, but they want you to buy them. I forgot they did that. Oh, achievers! I don't know if you I'm guys not doing that up there until I, until they guarantee that that shit works, and they're like, "Yes, it is works," and if it fucks up. No, we got you. No, I'm not, awesome. I'm not upgrading. I'm not upgrading Achievers, to go that watch that episode. I forget what episode it is. Just watch them all. Just no. watch them all until you find it. Uh, but it was just like their SSD thing was like, we won't guarantee the ones we we'll say you, will we'll work. Will work. It's like, we'll, what the fuck? We'll what does that you, mean? Yeah, right. We'll give you what you need to make it work, but we don't know if it works. That's why. hilarious. Uh, really why? quick, I'll run everyone through um, these editions. We have the Regalia edition. That's kind of the special edition if you well, want to get all fancy. Is. Uh, how much? No, no, I'm saying, do you know? I, I, I don't. I don't, actually. Okay. Um, actually, can you get prices see. for all of these, please? Uh-huh. I forgot to do that. I apologize, Achievers. He's going to grab that for you. Thank you, Alex. Um, this comes with the full game, Stoba. It comes with a couple um, little mini pieces, art cards, um, a, rec- a replica focus, and a stand for it, canvas map, and the art book, and ooh, excuse me, and a bunch of outfits and things like that. If you want to learn more, you can go to their website. And then the collectors and all that gets smaller and smaller. So that's that's the big one, the Regalia edition. And then it gets smaller as you go on. Most likely, me and Alex are going to be getting the digital deluxe edition. Um, that's all I'm going. 
because yeah, we we, we have everything. Yep. There we go. Jesus Christ, I had to like see if I could find it. The regalia uh, edition. Apparently, is... the prices are a mess. Let's see. Is... <sighs> I'm assuming the digital deluxe is eighty. All right, here we go. Uh, I found some. Here we go. Um, the standard is fifty nine ninety nine on PS four, of course, and sixty nine ninety nine on PS five. Yep. Standard. The special editions seventy on PS four, eighty yep. on PS five. Figured. We got those down. Who? Who? What am I? Am I missing the digital deluxe? Yeah. 90. Okay. Cause that's ninety. Yeah. And then okay. regalia. How much is that? Do you do you have that one? It's nobody's telling me. Let Guessing me see if I can it's find at it. least two hundred. Not important. Um, I did get an excerpt from way, way, way back then. Oh, I'm thinking three hundred on that thing, dude. I, it probably is actually three. I did grab a PlayStation blog. I wanted to throw in Sony's face really quick. Um, so this is a PlayStation blog that they gave out. This is that from them. This isn't me finding something and cherry picking it. This is what they said before the PS5 launch. Quote, Additionally, we know that the PS4 community will transition to PS5 at different times, and we're happy to announce PS4 versions of some of our exclusives. Marvel, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Sackboy, Big Adventure, and Horizon Forbidden West will also launch on PS4. While these three games were designed to take advantage of PS5 and its unique next-gen features like the ultra-high-speed SSD and DualSense controller, PS4 owners will also be able to enjoy these experiences when they launch. The PS4 digital versions of launch games I will say this again. The PS4 digital versions of launch games include a free upgrade on both PS5 consoles, while the PS4 disc versions of these games include a free upgrade on the PS5 with the Ultra HD Blu-ray disc drive. So that is them saying to you, if you bought the digital version, you would get an upgrade. And now they have taken that back and they're saying the only additions will be the specials. And collectors is 200, regardless to 60. Woo! You're dropping some cash on those. I would if I had it, you know? Regalia just... is out of stock already, apparently. I'm, I'm not surprised. Mom, they don't the make a lot of those. Store. They don't make a lot of those yeah. at all. The collectors are still available, though. Full previews of Elden Ring, Alex, are up on multiple sites. Have you read any of them? I have not. Good. My thoughts yeah, been... hmm? are hell yeah. Open world Dark Souls sounds good as hell to me. I mean, the, you know me and Dark Souls. Legacy dungeons sound very interesting. They're basically like the main, what would you call this? Like, like you know, in um, Breath of the Wild, there was the mythic beast things. Yes. And when you go inside, it's basically a big dungeon. Mm-hmm. Basically that, but there's like six um, giant open areas. The Legacy Dungeon is like the big version of a Divine Beast in each area. So it's like the big cool. dungeon. It's like the special right. dungeon where it's like huge. That's um, dope. Uh, they kept talking about player choice, which I hate that term because like it means nothing to me. Like what does player mm-hmm. choice mean? Like, oh, you get to choose. Like, like I get to choose a sword and an axe, right? Is that what you're talking about? I don't know. Yeah. It's just yeah. I hate the term. It's a pet peeve of mine. Um, this is a couple uh, details I I, um, I grabbed from, um, I think this was Nibelian. He had like a really good... Uh, like bracket out so we got fast travel from anywhere many optional encounters multiple paths and endings plenty of lore archers and magicians can fight from horseback as well um and then the legacy dungeons are separate from the overworld and then there are stealth mechanics similar to sekiro new mechanic guard counter strike from a normal block but that strike can be countered enemies have a stance balance that can be broken there's a hub with npcs which every dark soul has and then the moonlight great sword has not been confirmed yet with a question mark? I don't know what that's from. I meant to find it before this. Uh, the moonlight. Podcast. I think the moonlight great sword well, is a weapon in no, Dark Souls. I know, I know the. I know the weapon. I don't know why he brought that up that way. Like I, I think mm. he's saying like it hasn't been confirmed, and he's like hoping it to be confirmed. I don't know. I meant to look I this think, up prior, but I only had time to get the previews. Uh, I think that right I think that weapon has been in every Souls ish game. Sure they have. Yeah, I think it was in Demon Souls and everything. Yep. So that's why I think it was, oh, it's another Dark Soul-ish game, you know, so it, sh- it should be like a reference back to it. Because I think it might have even been in Bloodborne. Elden Ring. What do you think? I'm excited. I am. I, Alex, I can't wait. Hmm? I can't wait. I, I can't. I wonder how easy it's going to be to co-op. That's what I want to know. Like, can I hop into your world and we just chill and, like, kill stuff? 
will I get XP for that? Like, will I get souls to upgrade? Like, I want I want to know stuff like that. I assume it's gonna have the same concept as the the blood, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, that type of stuff where you Leave like a message you can, or something. Well, that or you can invade someone or you can have have somebody come help you and then once okay. they're done helping they'll leave they'll leave it's that, always that been that it, it's always been that software type thing so okay because this is by software isn't it from software is that yeah isn't it from the is it yeah okay so yeah that's definitely gonna do that yeah, they make all sorts of yeah okay i don't have much else yeah. to talk about alex so i'm just gonna move on unless you got final thoughts for that nope i'm just waiting for the game same that Nickelodeon fighting games full roster was leaked. Uh, and it's a really funny way the box art just came on Nintendo Switch eShop. Uh, so <laughs> this is the full box art. Um, this is everyone in the game, assumably. There could be someone that's not on the box art, but I highly doubt that. You probably show everyone that you have on the box. So uh, Abelina from All Real Monsters, Cat Dog from Cat Dog, Danny Phantom from Danny Phantom, Helga Pat- Pataki from Hey Pataki, Arnold. Yeah. Yep. Zim from Invader Zim, Lincoln Loud from The Loud House, Lucy Loud from The Loud House, Reptar from Rugrats, SpongeBob SquarePants Iron from Reptar. SpongeBob SquarePants, Patrick Star from SpongeBob SquarePants, Sandy Cheeks from SpongeBob SquarePants, Leonardo <laughs> from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Michelangelo from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, April O'Neil from Guess What? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Nigel to Thornberry. The I guess they didn't make the cut. Again, they could have just. Made them variants, but... Yeah. Gave me Nigel, really? Yeah, Nigel Thornberry from the Wild Thornberries. He, what is his moveset going to be? Like, is he going to... going to be his fucking mustache is going to go... <laughs> it's like... Becomes like... Like, like tentacles. <laughs> yeah, his little... You know, rah, rah, rah. Uh, mm-hmm. Please tell me he's voicing him. What is his name? Oh, God, I have to see. He's from that one movie, like, Have a Beautiful Day. Oh, what is it? <laughs> start. Does it start with an S? Simon? Something? I don't know. Hey, please let me look. Ren from Ren and Stimpy. Oh, Stimpy. Tim Curry. Stimpy. Yeah. Thank you, Arthur Curry. Thank yeah. you. Thank Tim you. Curry. Tim Curry. No, Tim Curry. Jesus, yes. Tim Curry, Tim Curry, yeah, he's the one who did the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, yeah, Tim Curry's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stimpy from Ren and Stimpy. Powdered Toast Man from Ren and Stimpy. Ang from Avatar The Last Ambender. It's going to be my amazing. You mean Ong? You feel good about yourself? Mm-hmm. Do you feel good about yourself, Alex? What you did there? Mm-hmm. Something mm-hmm. I love and cherish. You just mm-hmm. shatter all over it. <laughs> Cora from the Legend of Cora, and that seems to be the full roster. Alex, who's your main? Zim. I'm going to Ang all the way. I'm gonna Zim win. Is, Zim is my man. The, I'm going either, to edge guard you so hard. Do you understand look, it's either, me? It's either Zim or Cat Dog, and I'm just gonna use Cat Dog and fucking smack you with a cat and a dog at the same mm-hmm. time. You're gonna do a roll tack. I'm gonna have mm-hmm. to counter be it. Oh my god, I can't wait. For I don't this know, to man. Danny Phantom in-depth. is man dude too. Yeah, Danny Phantom is cool. I can't wait for this to be like the most in depth fighting game we've ever seen, and, and like we're we're like specking out our characters. Like, all right, I gotta be SpongeBob. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's got the best down B in the game. <laughs> it's all, if he has an all, he has to be like where he was at the the beach with the muscle, the muscle bodybuilder thing. Yeah, he's like this yeah, with the head, with yeah. the headband. And he's like punching him. You know, mm-hmm. he's got to do like some karate thing. Oh my god, I that reminds Ooh, me of oh, the, the um, foam hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. The 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 foam. Yeah, it reminds me of the episode with um, uh, Weenie Hut Junior. Ah, oh, such a good episode. <laughs> Weenie Hut Junior. Um. You're like, yeah, damn, you're that- He's done just crazy. <laughs> I love SpongeBob, my God. But uh, yeah, yeah that, that is the full roster of Nickelodeon's All Star Fighters or something. I don't even remember it. And I'm not looking it up because it's funnier that I don't know. It's so long. <laughs> it's so long. It is so long for some reason. Time stamp and I was like, I'm not even putting the name. It's like PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale. It's like, why are there so many words? You could have just said fighter or something. Ah, Cyberpunk can't promise anything. In an earnings report, the company's senior vice president of business development, Michael Nowakowski, said the uh, following pertaining to the next-gen release of Cyberpunk. Quote, the target is to release the next-gen version of Cyberpunk 2077 late this year. End quote. Um, Oh, sorry. Uh, He continues... At the same time, keeping in mind the lessons we have learned during the past year and taking into um, account that this project still remains in development, we can't say with full certainty that the production schedule will not change, end quote. 
<laughs> game's out already. <laughs> I love I'm, that. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to say this right now. That's my favorite part. At the same time, keeping in mind the lessons we have learned in the past year. Oh, what are those lessons, Mr. Uh, Nowowski? What are those? Look, I'm going to tell you right now. This game is dead like Anthem was. Mm, really? You think it's that bad? I beat the game. If it's taking this long to hey, fix That's issues... That's a good point. That's a good point. If it's like... It's, it, uh, let's see. Let's see. When did this game come out? Cyberpunk November release date. November 17th? Cyberpunk release date was December 10th, 2020. December 10th. In December, we're about to hit one year, and they <laughs> and they don't know when it's. it's they still don't That's know true. when it's going to be fixed. Well, they, well, game. they don't know the next gen version. It will never be fixed. There's, I think it's just a. Uh, there's just aspects of it I think are broken, but. Um, they, then they shouldn't have made the game. <laughs> hey man, you're preaching to the choir here. I'm usually the one shitting on Cyberpunk. You're usually the one that's like, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> it it just bothers bad. me because I'm. I'm waiting. I was waiting on the next gen version because I was like, I, I wouldn't mind regaining the achievements. And uh, now I'm just like, I'm not going back to this game. Whenever it releases, I'm not going back. The same no answer was given uh, about the free update to The Witcher Three Wild Hunt, also due out later this year. So they are not promising anything. Yep, because they're like, oh, we have to worry about Cyberpunk instead of Witcher, and, but nobody cares about Cyberpunk. They just want Witcher. But That's true. They I just our... want Witcher. Yeah, just give me Witcher. I'll pl- replay The Witcher three again. I will not replay Cyberpunk. Uh, Marvel's Midnight Suns. For some reason, it's not Suns as an S O N S. Yeah. Why is it? It's supposed to be Suns. S O N S. Why is it S U N? Why would it be S O N S? There's no actual sons, like like father figures. Like that's the name of the organization that they're using. And so, Midnight Suns is a real thing from Marvel. Hmm. Do sons? That is the actual like thing that they're called. So it's just weird that they call that. Why is it called Midnight Suns? It's it's like a it's like a secret organization thing. Hmm. It's been a long time since I read it, but uh, I'd have to. I would actually, it makes me want to reread them, to be honest. Um, maybe they're trying to make it different. I don't know. I don't know. The XCOM like game coming from the XCOM vets. Fire Axes have been showing off some gameplay and doing some previews with um, the typical outlets. The system seems to be based on a card like, uh, a deck like kind of card system where you're grabbing a hand every fight. And you're going off what cards you're uh, given, and there's a nope. roster of three hero players uh, that you are uh, given. Uh, assumably, those um, that is n- not including the character you will be playing, which is of course um, called the Hunter, which is a fully customizable new hero, which is the daughter of the main um, antagonist Lilith. You are summoned to um actually kill her because you're the only one that has killed Lilith before. This is like a like a demon lady, seems to be. Mm-hmm. Seems to be. Um and I pulled a quote from uh IGN to talk. Combat in Midnight Suns involves picking three heroes and using a deck of random ability cards. Your abilities are tied to these cards, and because each hand is random at the start of the battle, you have to think strategically to get results. These cards can also be upgraded as you progress through the game. Why do people think we like this card shit? Alex, uh, they ruined they 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 ruined a Kingdom Hearts game with to me with this card shit. What's, I why, don't, what's your problem with Chain of Memories? It's a good game. It was good. We, we, we I, I watched it. I, I love the story, but I, I, I hate the card shit. We have to not get sidetracked. <laughs> the Midnight Suns. I hate the card shit, man. No, <laughs> this game's dead. I I can't wait for it. Oh it well, doesn't yeah, the preview? Looks like a solid seven point five, at, like out of ten. Like it looks like a okay game. This is gonna be an okay mm-hmm. game. I'm not gonna be singing its praises. I'm just gonna be like, it was fun. Gonna, I got to be Wolverine. <laughs> like mm-hmm. you know, I'm I gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's gonna get a five point five to six. No, Alex, don't say the that. The only reason, yeah, the only reason I give it that high is because it's Marvel. Oh, he said that high. That's like barely over six. I just feel like, uh, like the, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't want to get into this right now. <laughs> I'm just saying, does anybody still talk about XCOM? Yeah, 
Yes, XCOM is a huge game. Mm. You don't like Anymore? strategy games. You don't like strategy games though, because you're not you're not you're not into the strategies. Maybe I'm biased. You're bi- know, a little but... biased. You're a little biased. It's okay. Little biased. It's okay. okay. I don't like Turbo Tax. Let's see. You know. I mean, I don't like to to, to do the XLs or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, I was, quick thoughts. It looks interesting. The voice acting uh, doesn't sound I great. Mean, um, mm-hmm. The little bit of the previews I saw, um, the card system looks not very deep. Although they could not be showing the cool stuff. Uh, the executions and like super moves look kind of cool. Uh, I want to play a game where I hang out with Blade, Ghost Rider, and Doctor Strange. That sounds kind of just. Dope. I'm just so, confused because I saw a screenshot of it, and I don't know if maybe it was just a weird way. But, like, from what I've seen with these type of games, isn't there, like, a grid system? Does This, this yes. one didn't seem like there was a grid system. It was just I, you were, like, in front of each other, kind of like how, like, for example, like... Um, so it's it's turn-based? Yeah, kind of there, like a turn-based thing. Like, I, what is this, Yu-Gi-Oh? Like, I, I mean, we have cards, and we, our monsters are in front of the field. I think they're hiding the grid system to try okay. and not make it seem as strategic as it is. Because okay, you can we, see from the preview that they mm-hmm. are very intentionally not showing you like turn-based stuff. It's you picking a mm-hmm. card and doing a cool thing. Like again, okay. let's let's remind the achievers that let's not forget these these publishers, their job is to sell the game. So so you know, just when you're watching these things, think about this is a commercial i am watching so i just get scared when something tries to be oversold oh that's every fucking thing we've ever bought and i feel like right like uh, that says i mean well video game marketing specifically video game marketing is very over the top in many ways let's not forget let's not forget last week alex i watched a xbox game showcase where 10 minutes was dedicated to a to a medieval weapon Marketing for video games and guess are what? very and guess over the top. What? How much is that game gonna make? Those I don't people know. on the Age of Empires Four is big no, franchise, I know, I know. but I, like Clash of Clans, people love that shit, dude. But but for but I, I, it's one of those things where like, is it big enough to warrant all this? I don't know. Maybe it is, but I was like, why are we still doing it? It's not important. But I agree with you though. It, it, like things being oversold, it does get annoying. And when you keep hearing yeah, about blue. something. Death Loop. Death Loop. Don't get me started with Death Loop. I, that was one of the games the I was game, like most excited for, and now I'm like, please just release the game. My God, I, I don't want to see any more of it. It's but... ba- dude, it's made it made me now want to play the game. I when it comes out, I'll probably watch you play it, and I'm probably not even gonna worry about it. I'm if definitely it looks, playing. If it looks, if it, I'm gonna watch you, and if it looks enticing, like oh, I was like, oh, okay, it looks fun. I'll give it a shot. Then I will. Right now, I don't want to touch it. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you it, can be oversold on something. It reminds me of like the movies that, uh, uh, uh hey kids, they show you the, they show you the whole movie yeah, in the trailer. Yep, yep, like the trailer, and you're like, oh my god. They just like, told me what happened in the trailer. Sometimes, like on on principle, I mean, like I'm not seeing this movie. Like, like wanna, just to, like I don't want to be a part of this marketing garbage where you tell me the movie and I go watch it. You want to see the perfect trailer, and every trailer should be like this. Watch Spider Farm Far From Home. I thought you were gonna say, uh, and we have a reacts on Spider Man Far From Home Alive on our church, uh, Twitch. Well, that, Jesus, was your, our that was your channel right now. Did you? Uh, I thought you were gonna say Man of Steel. I mean, that was a good trailer. It was right. Oh my yeah, god, Jor- Jor-El I mean, talking over it. Oh. The music. Oh, that's yes. such a good trailer. Oh my god, so we're stopping the show. We're watching Man of Steel's trailer. <laughs> we should. People would love that right we'd now. We'd get. We they would, but we'd get claimed, and this is an hour long thing. I don't want to do that. Right now, yeah. All right, <clears throat> we're going to coming soon to Xbox Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Xbox Game Pass. So, um, this is live as of recording. Craftopia game preview, cloud console, PC. This is the ID at Xbox title. You arrive on a small island, packed with animals, resources, and infinite possibilities. What do you do in this game is completely up to you. Gather resources, harvest crops, fight bosses, capture enemies, building a lovely house, unlocking new islands, exploring the world, and more. What will you do when you can do anything you've ever dreamed of? Final Fantasy 13, uh, console and PC, September 2nd. Again, live as of recording. Final Fantasy 13 is a fantasy RPG with, in, in which a band of brave humans struggle against fate in the utopian sky city of Cocoon in the, prime, in the primeval world of Pulse. Follow stylish heroine lightnings, fast-paced battles, and high adventure in a spurious new world. I'm going to say it. Everyone's going to be very pissed off at me. Underrated Final Fantasy game. 
Oh, no, I'm... Fuck you guys. It, it, I liked 13. 13 is good. Everyone Dude, likes I, to make fun of 13. And I'm like, they, Dude, first off, one of the best comments is Snow. Everyone oh, yeah. hates Snow for some reason. Snow's really cool. Oh, no, know. dude. Yeah, everybody hated him. I don't, I don't know, know why. why. I got to replay this game just to see because I like 13, maybe 13 to I play. I shot it. I started playing Lightning Returns, but I never finished that one. I didn't either. It got weird. But did they really? They didn't need to make sequels. So I don't know why they did. it. I mean, I didn't mind it. I mean, they 13 made 10 2, I didn't 2. love. The way it ends, too, I was like, what the fuck? Like, I was like, what is this game? Like, it's so look, weird. Look, Final Fantasies and their sequels, I mean, really? 10-2? I mean... Um, that was great. I got to play as Yuna, and I got to shoot people. They had a dry sphere system that was really good. I got to be a black mage. I could switch to a thief at any time I, want, <laughs> anytime I wanted to. You got to a moving love story on how she's trying to find Titus. Like, it was very deep. Wow, signs of everything for me. Signs of. I'm joking. I hate you. <laughs> signs of the Sojourn Cloud Console PC Sojourner. Uh, Sojourn. Sojourner. Sojourn. It's Viking. Not like speak. It's Sojourn. You sure? Achievers, comment below with the correct pronunciation. A narrative card game about connecting with people. Your deck is your character, reflecting your experiences and shaping your relationships. Travel to diverse locations to acquire goods for your shop. Along the way, you'll encounter optimistic stories and compassionate sure, characters That's how you say it. and delightful surprises in a world where climate change has made life real. Whoa, that's it. What the f That really takes a right turn at the end sentence. A narrative card game about connecting with people. Your deck is your character, reflecting your experiences and shaping your relationship. Travel to diverse locations to acquire goods for your shop. Along the way, you'll encounter optimistic stories, compassionate characters, and delightful surprises in a world where climate change has made life hard. What? Space out. Like, you can't just end your sentence with climate change is hard. Like, you, like kind of space it out there. Jesus. Surgeon Simulator 2 is finally out, Cloud Console and PC. ID at Xbox September 2nd. No, no, no. This, sorry, this came out. This is finally on Game Pass, is what I meant. Sorry. Mm -hmm. These, this is like a perfect Game Pass game. Bob's life is in your hands. Scrub in solo. Oh, God, that sounds. Scrub, scrub in solo. Uh, or with up to three friends in this physics based sim and unearth the mysteries of the Bosa Labs medical facility. Explore hundreds of community-made levels and even create your own using the sandbox level building tool. Or if you prefer, spend your time replacing all of Bob's limbs with heads. That also works. The so there's what is so this? you can so you can walk around everywhere. I guess you can. I thought, the you, I thought one? well, that's you're probably thinking of the first one. Well, yeah, because I thought that's what the surgeon simulator was. You just sit in front of a well, dead is, body and you start the, well, cutting this is shit. The second one. Access all areas. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, this is the second one. Crown so, Trick Cloud right. Console and PC ID at Xbox September 7th. Welcome to the Nightmare Realm. <laughs> Quite a way to start a sentence. Guide protagonist L on a perilous journey through procedurally generated dungeons, carefully navigating unique enemies and traps that only move when L does thanks to Crown Trick's unique synchronous turn-based mechanics strategically pan each move to survive master a combination of skills familiars and weapons to escape the labyrinth breathe edge cloud console and pc another idea at xbox september 9th inspired by retro futurism soviet aesthetics and dark comedy movies breathe edge is a fresh take on the survival genre that puts you in control of a simple guy called the man who is carrying his grandpa's ashes to a galactic funeral and suddenly finds himself in the middle of a universal conspiracy. This is a wild week for Game Pass. This is wild. Nuclear Throne console and PC ID at Xbox, also September 9th. Nuclear Throne is a post-apocalyptic roguelike like top... Oh my god, this week. Uh, Nuclear Throne is a post-apocalyptic... This is what it says. Rogue... Like, 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 top down shooter. Who writes these? Fight your like, way like. Yes. <laughs> Fight your way through the wasteland wastelands with powerful weaponry, collecting radiation to mutate some new limbs and abilities. All these things and more you could do if you only, if only you were good at this game. <laughs> Can you reach the nuclear throne? I I feel like I've taken LSD. 
This can't be real. The Arful Escape console and P I've heard good things about this. ID at Xbox, September 9th. A teenage guitar prodigy sets out on a psychedelic multi-dimensional journey to inspire his stage persona and confront the legacy of a dead folk legend. Starring voice performances by Michael Johnston, Caroline Keenly, Lena Hetty, Jason Swartzman, Mark Strong, and Carl Weathers. I really want to try this game out on the 9th. I'm mm -hmm. going to have to go pre-install it because I, I want to try this game out. This looked really cool. Um, like a long time ago in a uh, like showcase thing. Okay. And just as a reminder, because Alex would shake me if he if I didn't say this, Quake is on everything. Uh, if you're on PC, it's on each PC. Um, Quake One is on cloud and console. Uh, two and three is only on PC though. I love Quake. Excuse me. Oof, I had a burp there. Um, we, we achievers again. Tell me if you want to know about DLC. I skip them if Represent. I don't think anyone cares. Uh, leaving soon. Uh, leaving September thirteenth. Red Dead Online. Um, on cloud console and PC. Leaving September fifteenth. This is a longer list. Company of Heroes two on PC. Disgaea four on PC. Forza Motorsport seven cloud console PC. Hot Shot Racing cloud and console. The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance Tactics cloud console and PC. Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales cloud and console. Why is Forza Motorsport seven leaving? That's it. That's exactly what I was about to say. Is like out of all of them, really right Forza that's oh, leaving? Oh, hold on, right? What announced on July? Did, oh, we no, we covered this. Announced on Ju July 29th, 2021, Forza Motorsport 7 is leaving stores and Xbox Game Pass on September 15th. Remember, we covered this. Mm. They announced that they, it has to leave the store for, I assume, um, publishing reasons, like for like this, like something with cars or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I forgot we did have a show about this, that the, that the whole the whole last game is gone. I might yeah. buy it just to keep it. Well, for any Game Pass players who previously purchased DLC for the game, okay, so people who buy, buy, didn't buy the game but DLC, but not the game itself, will have good news. They will receive a token for the game through the Xbox Message Center so that you can continue playing the 7. So if you, for people who don't That's own cool. it, yeah, for people who so don't, don't own the it. game, yeah so, don't, yeah, so don't buy it. But if you did buy DLC, yeah. you'll get a, a code for the game, which meaning... I might go buy some DLC. You might as well buy some DLC. We go buy two DLCs. Apparently, we get the code. Boom. Yeah. Game in the system, achievers. We're on another level. September PlayStation Plus lineup. Overcooked, all you can eat is your PS5 game of the month. Hitman 2 and Predator Hunting Grounds are your PS4 games of the month. Hitman 2 must play. If you don't play that, I'm going to come. I'm going to smack your nip. <laughs> Predator Hunting Grounds. Not a must play. But if you love Predator in any way... It's definitely a drive-by game. You, thank you, Alex. Drive-by game. Play for the weekend. Have fun a little bit. There you go. Overcooked all-you-can-eat. Mandatory play with a significant other or close friend. Significant other if you can muster. If you don't have a significant other, maybe just don't even look at the game. It's not a good solo game. But if you have someone that you want to challenge your relationship with, play this game. Very... Yep. Very yeah, challenging. Yeah, my wife and I relationship definitely is at the very bottom level when it comes to Overcooked. <laughs> well, that's why I don't play that game with her anymore. Coming to PlayStation now over the next few months, I have dates for all of these. Um, PlayStation got real mad when all the Final Fantasy games went to Game Pass, so they're all coming to PS now. Final Fantasy VII is on September 7th uh, on PS now. September 8th... Uh, Jesus. Final Fantasy VIII <laughs> remastered October 5th. Final Fantasy 9, November 2nd. Final Fantasy 10 and 10 2, December 7th. Final Fantasy 12, Zodiac Age, January 4th. PlayStation clearly did not like all the Final Fantasy games on Game Pass, so they put them all on PS now. Alex, date mm -hmm. updates. THQ Digital Showcase event has been announced for September 17th at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, hosted by Jeff Keighley. Um, it has six new games announcements, and it has, quote, return of legendary franchises and sequels to beloved games, end quote. Whatever that means for you, enjoy. I don't, mm. I don't think I care about this. Um, uh, we know about Saints Row, so that's not here. I can't think of what else they'd be working on. They've been buying nothing but IP this whole time, so maybe it's something I'll like. I don't know. Hmm. <sighs> I don't know. Do you know they showed more uh, Dead Space uh, remaster stuff? 
So I saw a quick Twitter video of some Dead Space thing, and I was like, oh, they must have showed mm-hmm. new stuff, but I haven't seen it. Did you, they, you... Sh- they, I didn't watch the gameplay, but I did see a screenshot of uh, the original versus the new one. The new one looks like it's all brand new game like oh, yeah. the the textures are like completely clear for like new new gen systems like you can tell it's you remember call of duty black ops i think three and the 360 version was like you could see the all the textures but then you see there's a truck and then when you go to the next system it's a tank so they had to completely change all the textures and it looks so different that's what it looks like with Dead Space. Everything, all like everything, is so so looks so much better. Like the the fog, the darkness, like his armor is so cool. Like I am, it made the screenshot made me excited, and it was just a screenshot. I'm ready for Dead Space. It's time to come back. I'm an easy guy. You you release Dead Space, I buy it. They didn't have to do anything. I'm not proud of that fact, achievers. All right, but I'm honest. Look, you re-release Fear, and you got me too. Look, you give me Dead Space new achievements, done. Going right you give back me new in. achievements for any games that I've played before, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is something new. Tell me what you think, Achievers. It, tell me if you would prefer, like, bigger games on the list. I don't know. But I have September's new video game releases. Um, I'm thinking about doing this every month just so you all can kind of plan if you're trying to buy a specific game, you can either start saving money or if you forgot a game was coming out, you can be like, oh, uh, you know, that reminds me I need to look at. So just give us some feedback if you want this or not. Uh, so Life is Strange True Colors is September 10th. NBA 2K22 is September 10th. Tales of Arise is September 10th. Deathloop yes. is September 14th. Yes. Kina Bridge of Spirits is September 17th. Diablo Second Resurrected is September 23rd. Death Stranding Director's Cut is September 24th. Lost Judgment is also September 24th. And the New World game is September 28th. You sure? <laughs> I'm not confident about that New World. I wouldn't be shocked <laughs> that I think it's late again. But uh, yeah. but uh, again, Achievers, let us know. I, I, I assume you guys would want that, but if you don't, yeah, I'll keep it up. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, some people don't know release dates for certain games, so yeah, it helps. And like, I didn't know Kenna was this this month. Mm, it might be this month. Or Diablo Two Resurrected. I'm waiting on that. I'm waiting on the Death Training so I can get that uh, plat. Hopefully, it works this time for my instead of ghosts. Instead of that. ghosts screwing you in the mouth. Did you ever go to do that DLC yet? I need to go do it. I yeah, went because I downloaded I, everything and like mm-hmm. I, like because when I went to do it, it it was mm-hmm. downloading and I was like, oh, let me go play a game and I mm-hmm. got sidetracked. I've been playing Psychonauts too. Mm-hmm. We'll end the show with what we've been playing, by the way. Gotcha. We were having good conversation. I didn't want to break. I got gotcha, uh, gotcha. Tokyo Game Show 2021 schedule has been revealed. September 30th, we have the King of Fighters 15 special program. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Whatever that means. If you want to. King of Fighters, yeah. Yeah. It's a fighting game. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep, I it's a popular game. I I know someone that mm-hmm. specifically was like, "Oh, did you see King of Fighters?" So I was like, "Yeah, yeah but people I didn't love know that was... stuff as Street Fighter, yeah. go, more combat yep. things like that." And surprisingly, Alex, mm. Xbox is having a Tokyo Game Showcase for uh, uh, on September thirtieth. Mm. Xbox has no presence in Japan of any substance. I was mm. incredibly shocked. To see that they're going to have a Tokyo Game Showcase. Now, am I worried because the Gamescom Showcase was as bad as it was? Yeah, I am. But they, if they know their audience, they should have a good show case, Xbox. You're going to Tokyo. Show the games, okay? I'm doing the, I'm doing the lower the glasses down the nose to show concern, okay? We have some exclusive news and content. That is Exclus- a direct quote. Exclusive content. That could be anything. Forza Horizon is going to have new rims. That's exclusive content that they only right. gave you. So you, get the, you, get, you, get, you finally get Toyo tires. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to say it. Alex, I'm going to say it. Mm. Give me a second. We need it, and I'm really hoping you grabbed it. But I'm, I really hope you grabbed it. But I'm gonna say Persona, you man. You, you know knew. Me, so you knew. I was like, I give me Achievers, Persona Five. I'm, I'm holding the vinyl collection of Persona Five soundtrack. 
Why it's coming to Xbox. Why else would they be at it's Tokyo? It's coming to Xbox Atlas. Get ready to be home. You'll never see it coming. <laughs> That's a you, you went so high pitched that the mic literally broke. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> just, it's just, I, I just, um, it's all broken. We have to end the show. Mm -hmm. Be awesome. Get uh, your mics. Get, yeah. I, once these mics break, dude, it's gonna suck because I have to get. I'm gonna buy the nice wave mics. Those are, those those are like, God ones? Yes, they're like two hundred dollars. So like, I hope these never <laughs> break. But when yeah. they do, I'm gonna have to get them. Capcom mm -hmm. online program. That sounds terrible, but that's what it's called. October. It sounds like you're I know gonna what that learn. Means. It sounds like you're gonna learn about Cap. Like Capcom's like a new like suite of like tech based tools. Capcom so online program. Pro, they're probably finally gonna show that Resident Evil online game. Oh no! Stop! Stop! No! Please, God! No! No! October first, Square Enix presents Tokyo Game Showcase. Uh, Square Go ahead, Enix. Kingdom Hearts. Square. Stop. Square <laughs> Enix is weird. Like I can't know when to be excited for them. No, so I'm yeah. just never excited. You know, it's one of those things where you know the Hulk is always angry in the Avengers. Mm -hmm. I'm just always mm -hmm. not excited for Square Enix because it's just sometimes you get cool stuff, sometimes they just show you pictures of games and they don't mm -hmm. say anything. So I don't know. You believe that Game Hearts Three has been out for three years already. So why why did you do this to me? Stop bringing reality into my life, right? October 3rd, Arc System Works. I love your little dance there. Arc System Works <laughs> is also doing a Tokyo Game Showcase. And Alex, mm. woo, that is a long news week this week. But we covered everything, I think. If we miss something, leave it in the comment or Patreon DM us. It's only a couple cents a day. And you support us on our endeavor. Thank you so much for listening all the way through here. You're a true achiever. So whatever, regardless of what you do, either you just listen or you just like or you just share with a friend or you just do some comments, we appreciate you. This was a very long show, so we're going to do a very, 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 very quick. <laughs> what have you been playing? So I beat Man Eaters DLC. You ate this thing up. <laughs> dude, see what I did there? I, dude, you see that? Did you see what I did? Yeah, I did. I saw you it. Ate I saw it. it. Cause you're a shark. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you sent me the trailer that the the DLC was out that day. Achievers, this like, was the span of like an hour, by the way. I sent him over. this, and he calls me. He's like, "Hey, I'm I bought it. I'm downloading." It. I'm like, "What?" Because <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for this DLC to come out because I didn't know if it was gonna be like included, you know, yeah. or or did you have to pay for it? So I looked for it, found it. It's fifteen bucks. Awesome. Truth Quest DLC? So fun. I'm not going to spoil what you fight, but it's awesome. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, literally, it was kind of hard. Oh, okay. Yeah, it gave me some trouble, but like the new powers? Awesome. The way my shark looks? Dope. Nice. And I just, it's more man eater. Now I get to get more achievements and, a th and keep, still keep my 100%. I was going to say 1,000, but it's over 1,000 now. Yeah, it's over 1,000. It said 1,300. It's over 1,000! So. Um, yep. So now I'm going to go to Song of Iron. I have been playing Psychonauts 2. I started that. It is a fantastic game. My God, it's been yep. a long time since I've played a platformer with substance. Now It is hilarious. It is hilarious. I love the cute art style. I love the interactions. They're very cute. It's almost like a little Pixar movie I'm playing. Very fun. Very fun indeed. The combat, I don't love. That's one thing I, I guess I have yeah. to say. Every time I'm fighting something, I'm like, ooh, this doesn't feel great. But yeah. it's, few, it's few and far between, so I'm not, I don't the really. The big get. thing with this game, I feel like it's trying to get me to do too, too many stuff with too many buttons. Like it was like oh I see it was like saying. oh you can do this with by doing this with the with this button and this trigger and then you can do this I'm like okay so it's like oh okay you can also do this with this button and it's just I think there's too many actions they but, were, they throw that, a lot at you at once although yeah. try not to overthink it I think most of the time you're really just hitting one but again I, I might not be playing it right but I think I am but it's 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 fun. It's one mm -hmm. of those games where I'm like, I, every now and then I pick it up, play a little bit, drop it down, go back to Destiny, play that, drop it down, mm -hmm. go back to Psychonauts. 
Is that's all I'm doing. I think I'm gonna play some Song of Iron and the Manatee Eater DLC this weekend. Um, mm. when I'm off, easy. Very, I'm very gonna beat that Manatee Eater DLC in like in in like two days. Nice. I just okay. I just keep playing it. My nice. wife was like, uh, my wife was like, oh, they got you back. I was like, yes, they did. And you're like shooting. Uh, I won't spoil it just because people haven't seen it, but like uh, you know what I'm talking about. Like, I definitely, the, I definitely hope they make a second one. Like I, I hope I I hope they get enough bases to be like oh man needed two or something like because it's, it's such an awesome game like it, it's one of those um underrated games like you never know very, like until you try it yeah very very it's very underrated I still mm-hmm. remember that's one of the first things we ever covered on the show is man eater you brought mm-hmm. it to me from that E three that we first made a show on it might have been the mm-hmm. second second show and you showed me I mean, man eater and I was like this looks sure, awesome it, it says, imagine GTA but you're being a shark. You're a shark. Num, num, num. This is a shark um, PG. I remember that, too. Ah, so cool. That is really all I've been playing, though. So, again, this was a yep. short one. We've been going very long, but this has been a good episode, so I don't mind at all. Mm-hmm. Achievers, again, you're a real achiever if you made it this this far into the show. This has been so much fun. Thank God Alex's power didn't go off at all this entire time. Oh, my God. We were worried we started, that was going to happen flickering. right before. Literally, I was about to start the show, and... I see the te- at achievers. I see the most terrifying. Think of your, think of your, like your, your brother, your best friend ever. And mm-hmm. out of nowhere, he just goes, wait, freezes. Everything's dark around him and he's not moving. And you're like, uh, what just happened? <laughs> Cause and like, uh, I think his power went out and I literally immediately call him and go, what yeah, happened? I like, really? <laughs> I've never seen that man call so fast. Dude, this like, if you've seen from my point of view, I was like, because because all i see is this like all I saw was this light my light flickered five times i was like that's why i was like wait and i just yep, stopped literally just like that it was just like that and i was like uh that's kind of scary <laughs> it's we watched uh, too many horror movies yeah uh they go for the lights first man but yeah yep. achievers thank you so much we're gonna go play some more video games mm-hmm. probably sleep but I'll sleep when I'm dead and I'm just Yeah, you will. I'm probably, I might go do some Iron Banana. I don't know. I'll decide on that. I might join you. Oh. Until next time. Until next week. Until the next news story. Go, Chief. Go, Chief. Wait.